Oh god, it's better than the first one. That's not true! That's impossible! Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. And one very little interesting tidbit to start off this review, the assistant director for this film was James McTee, the guy who then went on to direct V for Vendetta, and he hasn't really directed anything good since. Attack of the Clones takes place, what, like 10 years after The Phantom Menace. Anakin has grown up into a walking Me Too movement poster child. Ewan McGregor has grown the Jesus perm. And there is a very, very complicated doesn't make sense when you think about it plot going on. At this point, we still don't know who Sidious is, however his plans are starting to become more and more random. Because if his plan was to start this war in the first place, everything he has done prior, up until the end of the film, makes no sense in the grand scheme. Why did he try to assassinate Senator Padme if he knew that he wanted Anakin Why was her assassination attempt such a Why did Jango Fett, who sending was one of the greatest little bounty hunters really of could have all just time, sent How did Sifidia set up this after army? What was the point of the Trace so He just mentioned his own assassin. Why did the Jedi think that jumping in the middle of the Why did he just get his ears on Where did the Duke of character even just come out? He doesn't even make sense in the grand scheme of things. He was literally introduced because no one liked Jar Jar. There are a lot of issues with this film in terms of its narrative. However, the one very, very saving grace, it's not boring but for far, far different reasons. The acting in this is horrible. Natalie Portman's delivery is that of a block of wood. Hayden Christensen is that of a whiny man-child. Ewan McGregor, by God, he's trying his best, but the fact that he's on a green screen stage and he has really no direction whatsoever from George, he looks just as lost as you would feel in that situation. John Williams, once again, is absolutely killing it, though, with the score. The visuals of this film, once they get going, are fantastic. The final battle is still amazing to watch when that Trade Federation ship crashes and there's that huge dust cloud and they're like... I thought that was cool when I was a kid, and I still think that's cool now. Speaking of things that I thought was cool when I was a kid, that Yoda fight with Dooku. That was really cool. It kind of breaks his illusion of the character. I'm not as butthurt about it as a lot of people were. There were a lot of people who were very upset to see Yoda doing this. I can kind of understand their reasoning, because if he's this old and he's moving around this slow, how can he all of a sudden jump around like a Cirque du Soleil gymnast? But also, it's just the character of Yoda was meant to be that of wise and like a battle meditator. However, However, this is kind of building up to the fight in the third film because thank god that he did that because if he had just all of a sudden had Yoda take on Sidious without any prior knowledge of his skills that would have been really random but the main crux of the film is the relationship between Padme and Anakin and it just Ugh, God! Every time they say a sentence to each other, something to do romantic-wise, it's just like Bleh. their chemistry is just—it's not that great. Their dialogue and delivery is just Bleh, just terrible. There are some moments here and there, like when Anakin goes full postal on a Tusken Raider family, and it's funny to think about it now. But when I was a kid, I didn't really cue into the fact that he murdered women and children, so it's not really that much of a surprise when he just takes it a little bit further and kills some Jedi children. But they really had to double down on him doing it because he had already murdered an entire village. Mwah. The character of Anakin Skywalker on paper is a very cool character. A character being corrupted by his emotions, being manipulated by outside forces, and not being reprimanded because his master had a affiliation similar to that of his in his past. However, Obi-Wan was able to walk past it. He was able to move on from it. This is something that they bring up the Clone Wars show. That piece of information makes their relationship so much more important. But no, they have these, remember when we fell into that pit of gundogs? That dialogue isn't useful for anything, but the background relationship information about Obi-Wan makes his reluctance to do anything about Padme and Anakin make so much more sense. Fuck Lucas, you're a terrible fucking storyteller sometimes. And in the end, Attack of the Clones is a cringy movie, but it's an entertaining cringy movie. It's got a pulse, it's much more entertaining than the first film, but it's still stupid. I'm gonna give episode two a two out of seven. That's my review for episode two, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe now we're coming up on episode three fucking love this movie for so many bad reasons thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but i'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie thanks to a successful kickstarter campaign 
But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.